As you can see on this screen, we're about to do a problem from the online test number one. It's in section four, and it's problem number 18. By online test one, I mean test one of nine, the nine practice tests that you get from the SAT online study course. It's labeled as hard because it's problem 18 in a 20-question math section. As you know, the uh, math difficulties uh, go up roughly as you progress through a section. I picked this problem to do first because it is a perfect illustration of my previous post about the fact that you should learn how to do problems in more than one way. And hopefully you'll notice as we progress that that's pretty much my basic philosophy of all SAT prep is you should learn how to do problems in more than one way. As you can see, this is a question about averages. So before we even work on this question, I'm going to go to this side here, um, and we're going to do a little review of this. So what if I gave you three numbers, uh, 3, 10, and I know, 8, and I asked you to find their average. You'd say, okay, well, 3 plus 10 plus 8 is 21, and you might put that into your calculator. And then you divide by 3, because there are 3 numbers, uh, so the number of numbers is 3, and the sum is 21, and this formula right here looks something like the average equals the sum divided by the number of numbers. And that's kind of how everybody is used to averages. Instead of this particular formula, I'd like you to go ahead and memorize the formula in this, this version. And that is the sum equals the number of numbers times the average. Okay, so this right here is our guiding formula for this particular uh, problem. So let's, let's go back here. And when we go to read the question, uh, we always start at the end. Why is that? I don't know. It just so happens that in word problems, it's easiest to start at the end. One of the main reasons is by starting at the end, you're told what to uh, label as your variables. Um, so let's read the whole sentence. What is the average, that's the question, of the remaining two numbers? Now, remaining two numbers don't have a name, so we've got to give them names. I like the names A and B. <coughs> Anytime you see the phrase in terms of blah, 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 don't even read it. It doesn't matter. The question is then, what is the average of the remaining two numbers? Okay, and let's go back and read the beginning of the question. The average arithmetic mean of three numbers is x. If one of the numbers is y, well... Now I have my three numbers, just like over here my three numbers were 3, 10, and 8. I now have three numbers, A, B, and Y, and their average is supposed to be X. So if the sum equals the number of numbers times the average, in our example this is A plus B plus y equals 3 times x, because the average is x. 
Now, it looks like we're all set up to do some algebra. We're not actually solving for one of the variables individually. We're solving for what is the average of the remaining two numbers. And the average of A and B is A plus B over 2. So we've got to take this equation and quote-unquote solve it for a plus b over 2 and hopefully it's not so hard to see that it's 3x minus y equals a plus b then we divide both sides by 2 and we get to 3x minus y over 2 and the crowd goes wild because that tells us the answer is e now you're probably looking at this and you're probably saying there is no way on earth that I would ever think of that during the test. And that may be the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a method that you will be able to do. Um, now I'm going to try to delete Need to figure out how to delete all this stuff. So, hmm. Anyway, looks like we're gonna have to leave this up here because I'm just getting used to this program. I'm not exactly sure how to delete what's on there. The eraser doesn't seem to work. Well, this is all a work in progress, but um, a way that you will be able to figure out is method number two, which uh, basically involves plugging in numbers. So let's pick a number for x. Right, x could be 5. Let's pick a number for y. <clears throat> y could be 9. Now we've got to pick two more numbers that when you average them with 9, you have to get 5. Um, I'll just pick 2 and 4. Because 9 plus 2 plus 4, uh, divide that by 3, gives us 5. Now the average of the other two numbers, a and b, is 3. 2 plus 4 uh, and divide by 2 is 3. So now we just have to go one by one through the answers and see which one gives us 3. Well, x over 3 would be 5 over 3, not 3. Uh, 2 times y minus x over 3 is something like 18 minus 5 over 3, which does not give us 3. Remember, we're looking for uh, 2 plus 4 divided by 2, which is 3, because that's the average of the remaining two numbers. 2x minus y is 10 minus 9 over 3. That's 1 third. That's not 3. 3y minus x is 27 minus... Uh, 5, which is 22 over 2, that's actually 11. 27 minus 5, which is 22 over 2. Uh, and, of course, 3x minus y is 15 minus 9, which is 6 over 2. So that tells us that E is our answer. So, let's put it all together. What are our two ways? Um, the first way that we used was uh, this formula. The sum equals the number of numbers times the average. And then we solved for what we were looking for. We solved for a plus b over 2. And the second method that we used was 
we picked numbers for the variables. So we replaced uh, x, y, a, and b with numbers. And then we tested the answers. <clears throat> You'll notice that in this particular problem, the answers are all variable expressions. Let's see if I can get the eraser to work. No, it just doesn't want to seem to work. Okay, i got to figure that out. But um, the answers are all variable expressions, which means that we have to replace things with numbers and test the answers. That's different from other, other problems that uh, involve plugging in numbers. So, hope this illustrates a little bit about uh, what I mean when I say learn how to do problems in two different ways. Remember that formula, and remember to plug in numbers. Hope you learned something.